Hi, I'm Carrie Permensky, and I'm here with my co-author, Florine Mihai, and we're going to be talking about course design for TESOL today. Florine, would you like to start with an overview of the book? Certainly. Part one introduces language acquisition theories and their influence on teaching practices. Incorporating the information presented in part one, part two, from needs analysis to goal setting, to syllabus design and lesson planning, focuses on several cur curriculum design actions, such as establishing a needs analysis plan, setting goals in the classroom, creating a syllabus, putting together a lesson plan, and choosing a textbook. Part three, instructional activities and assessment techniques, is centered upon teaching and assessing language skill skills. We include listening, speaking, reading, writing, grammar, and culture in this section. All skills are discussed in terms of important theories and concepts followed by specific teaching and assessment act activities for second language classroom. The final section of the book assesses global trends in language course design. Covering programs from Europe to Asia, this section discusses the drive towards standards in North America and Europe, current teaching practices in Asia, and the influence of technology in contemporary second language or foreign language courses. Carrie, would you like to talk about how you use the book in your class? Absolutely. I think one of the favorite chapters for my books, according to what my students have told me and in student evaluations, is the needs analysis chapter. Um, and I think one of the reasons they love this chapter is that it's something that they can use in their classrooms right away. Um, whether they are teaching now or going to be teaching in the future, uh, the students really connected with this concept of a needs analysis. Uh, not only do they love the idea of connecting and understanding their their students in their classrooms that's something they can use no matter what they're teaching so for the next chapters that focused on reading writing listening speaking grammar or culture all of those courses um, can incorporate a needs analysis and students felt that it was a really important part of the course and set up that foundation just like the other theoretical framework which we introduce at the very beginning they really felt this moved easily into application so they learned about why they do what they do but how to do it how to connect with their students and feel uh, that they were setting up a course um, that worked well, no matter if they were K-12 or teaching in a community or state college or wanted to teach overseas. They all really felt that this chapter, uh, like many of the chapters, set them up um, for success in using something that connected to their students and they felt would be a unique and really great part of their TESOL classroom. Um, so Florian, would you have any final thoughts about the book to share? Just want to add that our book was designed to reach English as a second or foreign language teachers at all levels. Beginning teachers who want to teach or are teaching overseas, practicing English language instructors who want to know more about TESOL course design or pre-service teachers in a master's in a TESOL program. We have provided sufficient detail to make all theoretical and pedagogical concepts and principles presented, presented in this book accessible and comprehensible. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed uh, this overview of course design for TESOL. We'd love to hear from you, whether you're using the book now or thinking about using the book in the future. Uh, please connect with us or with someone at Michigan, and we would love to talk more about course design for TESOL. Thank you for watching today. We also didn't want to forget to mention that Course Design for TESOL is now available as an ebook at Michigan. So you can choose whether you want the paper copy or the electronic copy. Just go to the Michigan publisher and you'll see your choices. Thank you.